Hey guys, how's it going? Greg here, and let's solve k closest points to the origin. It's a really, really important problem because as we see in companies, Facebook has asked it 32 times, Amazon's asked it 96 times, as well as the other fan companies. So uh, let's make sure we get this question right. So we're given an array of points where each points at i is simply x i y i, and that's representing a point on the x y plane. Now we also have an integer k where we want to return the k closest points to the origin, which is located at the middle. It's zero. Now, whenever you say closest, we need to define what closest means. And in this case, the distance between two points on the xy plane is the Euclidean distance, as in it's the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Now, we're able to return the answer in any order, and it's actually guaranteed to be unique, except for the order that it's in. Okay, so guaranteed to be unique just means that there's not going to be two points that are tied with the same distance. Now, I think this is the worst possible picture they could have made for this, but basically, we have two points here and we've defined k equals one. So we want to return the point with the closer distance. I, I think it's this one, but it's actually kind of hard to tell. So our points, as we see on the graph, are this one is negative two and two, as we can see here, negative two and two, and the other point is one and three. So we need to return the closer point and it turns out the closer point is negative two, two. So how do we get that? Well, the distance between one and three in the origin is the square root of 10 and the distance between negative two and two and the origin is square root of eight. And so obviously you'd prefer the square root of eight and we only want the closest k equals one point. So that's simply the answer. So suppose we were given this array of points and I drew them on the graph over here. We made very simple points, just one, one, two, two, three, three, and four, four. Now we also have k equals two. So we want the k equals two closest many points to the origin, which we know is going to be this point and this point. So let's make sure they return that. Now, regardless of what formula we use, we definitely want to compute the distance between all of the points in the origin so that we can compare them. And this is the distance formula we're using. However, xj and yj are always going to be zero because the other point is simply the origin. So we can simplify this formula a lot. So our simplified formula is really just xi squared plus yi squared. Since there's only one x and one y, we can really just call it x squared plus y squared for any given point. And actually, we can simplify this even further. You don't even need the square root because that's just going to change them by a constant factor. So you really just need the distance formula of d of x, y is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is going to be our distance formula for how we compute the distance between the points and the origin. So let's just do that quickly. The distance over here is going to be four squared plus four squared is equal to 16 plus 16, which is 32. Okay, so now we have the distances for each of the points. If we wanted, we could kind of put that as part of the tuple. So it'd be three components. So now that we have these distances with each of the points, what we want to do is to get the k closest ones. The easiest way to do that is to sort the points in increasing order. So you could simply just have, if we just were including the distances, we'd have 2, 8, 18, and 32. Since we have those, we could simply just take these points and that would be our answer. However, this is actually going to be an n log n answer, and that's still pretty fast. That's not too bad, but we can actually get an answer that is n log k. Now, this is actually a lot faster if you can make the assumption that k is a lot less than n. And that's actually a pretty reasonable assumption because if you had say like n is a million points, so we had a million different points, well, you're probably not gonna ask the question like, hey, what's the top 500,000 points? Okay, what are the closest 500,000 points? You might ask that question, but it just seems pretty unlikely. You'd probably ask a question more like, what is the top closest point? What are the five closest points? What are the hundred closest points? That means k is orders of magnitude smaller than n. And so the n log k solution is actually a lot better. And most importantly, let's be honest, we're doing this for coding interviews. If Amazon and Facebook ask this question so many times, they want you to come up with this solution and they don't want you to come up with the slower one. Okay, and I just organized it so that the tuples are close to their points. So what we wanna do here is look at the points in order. So we see three, three, and we can imagine we, you know, we calculate our distance, which is 18. And then we're going to use a heap that only stores at any time less than or equal to k many elements. Our heap is never going to have more than k things. Therefore, at the end, it's going to have the k things that we want. It will have the k closest points to the origin. So we're going to initialize an empty heap. So we'll just call it h here. And here we're going to look at the first point. Okay, so it's 3, 3. As we saw, we're going to, you know, compute our distance, which is going to be 18. Now we're going to put this point onto the heap, and it's going to have the first value as the distance so that it gets controlled and ordered by the distance. So here we just 
just have that first value on the heap. Now we're going to look at the second point, okay? Our heap still has less than k many things. It has one thing and k is two. We'll get our distance, which is eight. And we want this to be, again, this is going to be a max heap, okay? So that means it's going to store the biggest distance on the top. When we put this tuple, when we put this tuple into the heap, it gets organized by the highest distance. So that means this tuple is actually going to go right here. It has a smaller distance, and so it's going to be lower on the heap. This is the top of the heap. This thing with the bigger distance is kind of ready to get sent out. Then things get interesting when we go over here. So we have the tuple of 4, 4. As we know, we're really not going to want this point in there. So how do we do that? Well, we're actually going to put it into the heap. And so we'll say, okay, let's put this tuple. It's right here. So 32, 4, and 4. And that's actually where it belongs in the heap because it is a max heap and this is a bigger distance. Except since the heap now has more than k things, we actually want to pop this off. And so we say, oh, let's get rid of the element with the biggest distance that's in here. So that immediately pops this off. And look, magically, hey, we have the closer points in the heap. This value with a bigger distance, we actually just immediately kicked this out of the heap. By the way, just for the terminology, when we push something into the heap, it's simply called a push. And if you take something out of the heap, it's called a pop. But what we actually just did is called a push pop. So it immediately, it pushes the item onto the heap and then it immediately pops one element off the heap. Now we look at the last point, which is one, one. We have our tuple over here. The distance is going to be two. And we see, okay, let's try to put this thing on here, two and one and one. And yes, it's actually gonna go to the bottom because it's a max heap. And then again, since the heap has more than K things, we have three things on the heap. We're going to pop off this biggest thing immediately. Okay, so now since we're through all the elements, we are left with these two things. What are these two things? Well, those are the things that we actually wanted. And so this is the correct algorithm. Now, what is the runtime of this algorithm? Well, let's go through it. So we went through all of the endpoints, so we're definitely going to have an N in here. For each of these points that we saw, the heap could have at most K many elements. And when we use the heap, whether we push or pop or we push pop, that's going to be a log of K operation, okay? Because there's K many things in the heap at most, and we are going to take log time to push and pop from that. So officially, this algorithm is going to take O of N log K time, which is much better better than n log n. Okay, so here's our code. We're going to start by importing the heap Q library in Python. So that is going to allow us to use a min heap and to use a max heap, we can actually just negate the distances that we put on. Now let's quickly define our distance function, which is going to take a point x, y, and that is going to return x squared plus y squared. So we are going to get a empty heap, which is going to be initialized as an empty list. And we'll go through the points. So we'll say for each x and y in the list of points, we'll get our distance d, which is equal to simply calling the distance on x and y. And we'll say, hey, if the length of the heap is less than k, so if we have less than k many things, will we want our heap to have k things. So we want this to be on there. We will do a heap q dot heap push onto the heap. And what do we push? Well, we want it to be controlled by the distance, but heap q implements a min heap. So to implement a max heap, we simply need to negate the distance. So we put on negative d, x and y so that we can store the points along with the distance. Now, if it wasn't the case that the heap had less than k elements, it must have exactly k many elements. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to put one on. We want to do a heap heap push, but we also then want to take one off. So we'll heap heap push pop onto the heap. We will give it again the negative distance, x and y. You're still pushing on the exact same thing. You just want to take the element with the biggest distance off right away. Now, after we're done this loop, our heap actually has the k things that we want. We simply just need to return the list of the tuple of x, y, and we need to extract the old underscore because we don't need the distance. You could call it d if you want. For d and x and y in the heap, we are going to extract the points that we needed. We can return them in any order. And if we were to run this, this is going to work just fine and a lot faster than the n log n solution. So as we said, the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be big O of n log k time. And the space complexity is going to be, we have a heap is the only thing we're storing and it's going to have at most k many things. So the space is going to be big O of k. I hope this was helpful guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Happy learning.